I just want to deliver the knockout punch. And the reality is they're not delivering the knockout punch to these teams. No. They have to scratch at fight and claw Viking style. You got to accept the fact it's going to be a three hour fight or four hours as yesterday's game ended up being. And you just got to hope that you have more points when it all ends. And, you know, even with all that and, and the bills had a 10 point lead, uh, you know, fairly late in the game and the, the dolphins wouldn't go away. Um, there was a strange moment, the delay of game penalty that happened as the Dolphins were trying yeah, for a to, fourth and to one. get in field goal range. Here it is with 2.33 to go. The clock ticks down, and they were really slow to get the plays off. This was a problem all day. Yeah, um, and, and look, we, we talked about this yesterday. How much of it is the play caller not getting the play in? How much of it is the quarterback not being able to translate the play? But these are all things you better have figured out. The whole idea with Skylar Thompson being the starter and being named the starter fairly early in the week and Tua Tonga by low being ruled out was Mike McDaniel wants to know who the guy is so he can get him ready. Okay, fine. He better be ready. Yeah. Not just to run the plays. He better be ready to call the plays. He better be ready to get to the huddle. He better be ready to get the play off. And um, here's Mike McDaniel talking about that late delay of game penalty that uh, uh, ultimately was the dagger for the Dolphins. You know, there was some communication that we had gotten the first down. So then we were um, deploying a, a group of players for the first and ten call, and then it was it was articulated uh, that no, it was fourth down. It was communicated to me through the um, upstairs, you know, from a, from the headset. I think um, I was standing by an official. Uh, I, I had just had gotten convicted information that it was a first down, um, so I, I don't really know exactly who it was from it was probably the first time all year that that had happened so um you know you it, you you try to do your best now look we're both mike mcdaniel fans but i'm confused chris you're down on the field and they have big orange sticks and they have another one that has a one two a three or a four on. right well I, I hear you i mean i don't know why he's relying on somebody upstairs telling him to cold, get first the down no no oh, i'm okay. just I'm, i yeah. no no yeah, I, yeah you turned the thermostat in. down no, you I were a little cold hot. you didn't want to admit it because you're like wait i'm the jerk that turned it down usually about an hour <laughs> and a half in, the temperature catches up with 63 <laughs> and a half and i usually put it on but um, I, I hear you though yeah i i, I well i think you. what happens is this sometimes like as a play caller right right it's like they you get that was I can't remember who it was to play before they were very close to the first down. It did look like, you know, I think sometimes as a coach, they see maybe the initial lineup of the referee. Sometimes we see a referee on the wrong side of the field do that. Yeah. Right. And then you, you see, see the that. chains move. You see the chains the move. Chains move and they don't write move. down at your play sheet now because you're going, wait, I just saw him go like this. So it's first down. And then you're kind of looking you look up and go, oh, wait, wait, we changed here. But forget that play. Mike, you said it right. That was a, that was an issue the whole game. You know, and, and I'm sure that really was part of the problem there on that fourth and one. But it looked like more times than not. And, and this is where I'm going to, you know, connect dots or we didn't see these issues with the Dolphins all year long with any of the other quarterbacks. It, was, it seemed like it was it's a rookie playing in a tough environment. And we saw too many times other plays where they couldn't get out of the huddle or guys were breaking the huddle. And then they were like coming back like, what, what, what did you say? And then you were like, you could see Skylar Thompson opening up his wristband again. Like, hey, no, yeah, you got the post route. And blah, blah, blah. like, so there was obviously some of that, which you would expect with a younger quarterback in that situation. That was tough there. Um, but, you know, the Bills. Yeah, uh, just sloppy. They can't do that. They can't. They're dangerous. We know that. Josh Allen is phenomenal. Um, but, yes, he has lost that little feel of, you know, toting the, the line, towing the line of crazy and towing the line of, like, tactically aggressive. And I think he's going a little bit more into the crazy mode a little bit, you know, the second half of the year, and that's hurt them. Now, one last point before we take a break. Tua Tagovailoa's future, he was ruled out on Wednesday. And again, my understanding is Mike McDaniel likes to know who the quarterback's going to be. Get the quarterback ready. If Tua's not cleared by Wednesday, we got to get somebody else ready to go. We can't just count on him getting cleared on Saturday. He's not going to be ready to play. Let's just get someone ready. And they got Skylar Thompson ready, but you know, almost ready enough to win the game. There was a report on Sunday from ESPN that Tua is expected back as the starting quarterback in 2023. Expected is a word that can go in a lot of different ways. After the game, Mike McDaniel was asked about it, and he said, I'd be a fool not to bring him back. We're ready to embrace him when he's cleared to play and when he's healthy. 
that's fine too. They want to convince everybody that he's their guy. There's one thing they can do, and they can do it right now. They can pick up his fifth-year option. If if you want us to believe that you're all in with Tua, just pick up his fifth-year option, and we'll believe it. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it, or sign him to a long-term contract. I I don't think that it would be prudent at this point to make any broad determinations about Tua because he still hasn't been cleared from his latest concussion. And I know at some point he's going to be healthy again. He's going to be cleared to play again. Yeah, right. But how long is he going to stay healthy? Yeah. And how much of your season do you want to have put on the back burner because you brought in a backup or the backup to the backup because the backup gets injured too and your season falls apart and you can't get to where you want to be because you don't have your best quarterback available to right. you. All the other great teams have their best quarterbacks available to them most of the time, if not all of the time, you rarely see great starting quarterbacks miss games. You rarely see it. You rarely see them get injured. They're they're protected, unlike any other player on the field except a punter or a kicker. So I, I just because ESPN reported he's expected to be back, just because McDaniel said what he said, I won't believe that he's truly the long term guy until they pick up the fifth year option or they sign to a long term deal. I, and I think they have to consider their options. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to always be thinking, is there someone out there at this position who is better than who we have that we, who we can get and we can move forward with that person instead of the one we have? It's a ruthless business, but that's how it works. Yeah, agreed there. I mean, yeah, the potential, we saw what the Dolphins can be with Tua, but, you know, to your point, uh, this is a guy that's undersized, and there's there's a head concern, and that's going to scare any team to where they are going to evaluate the situation and kind of, you know, talk about the pluses and the minuses of it all together. And uh, you know, Mike, I'm 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 not no knowledge of this, but you know, this is one just where I I, I sit here between what we talked about last segment and this segment, and I go Lamar Jackson, and will he will be with Baltimore and Miami situation? Have I have a hard capital. time. They don't have the draft yeah, capital, right? They'd have problem. to trade some players for sure to get along with that. Yeah, yeah I know. And uh, but but it's I do make that connection a little bit or think about if there's a real possibility of that in the off season. Well, and Lamar's from Miami, and right. that's been the speculation for a while that maybe right. he'd like to get back to Miami, but he doesn't want to be the bad guy and stand up and say I want to go to Miami. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play for the Ravens anymore but again back to that point at some point something's got to give and maybe something well, sometimes you're gonna have to be the bad guy because people are starting to think he's the bad guy now that's anyway. right so you may, may as well be the bad if, they, if they're right. already if they're making you the bad guy you right. may as well go ahead and be that's the bad I mean. guy hi it's mike florio thanks for watching pft on youtube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk